Hello and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic for some crossword content today. Now Simon told me that I ought to record my solve of today's times crossword. So that means two things. One, I always obey him, so I did it. And two, it's going to be interesting. And that means it's either going to be at the very easy or much more likely the very hard end of the spectrum. So I was aware of, of that going in, but nonetheless, I did so. So what I'm going to do now is play my solve, which I did record earlier. And I'll kind of talk you through the puzzle and I'll probably pause as we go through to explain some of the clues. Um, there won't be much pausing at the start because I don't get a clue for a while. So I'm looking at one across, one not thinking to take from scripture. And even though I think the definition is one not thinking, I can't see what to do there. I had a look at one down, kept promise while being an example in Java say, some sort of Indonesia reference maybe. Two down, Italian left party after serving up hot food. Now there's all sorts of bits of that that look like classic crossword components. Three down, composer minus the lyricist ultimately useless. I couldn't see what to do there, although that may be an example of being worried by the crossword's difficulty. Actually, that's a reasonably normal um, clue. Eight across, most unheard of, exclamation mark, six, eight. Didn't know what that could be. Four across, hill walker in fog could say wrongly. Um, mist for fog and miss something for say something wrongly maybe. Couldn't see what to do. Four down staff, I was thinking rod, acquiring millions, instant wealth, don't know. And finally, five down, I have a look at. I'm just going to pause here before the answer goes in. Judge getting in way, disarranged royal court. Um, that's difficult, but judge is often the letter J, which can be short for judge um, in crossword clues. So I'm thinking of getting a J into this and then royal court attracts my attention. And as an avid Jane Austen fan, I'm aware that the royal court was always at St. James, but that would be two five. But I'm also aware that St. James is sometimes given as St. James's. In fact, maybe normally given as St. James's and I know that crosswords don't show apostrophes. To some people's annoyance, they think it should be two comma five apostrophe one. But anyway, why would this be St. James's? Even given that the J is judge, that would have to be getting in way. Well, that could be street or ST. And that would leave A-M-E-S-S -S for disarranged. Well, if you're a mess, you're disarranged. And that's how this one works. So. St. James's is the answer at five down and I figured it out possibly just as I was moving on I think I figured it out yeah in we go so one and a half minutes before my first entry goes in and that's really for me that's quite a long time um, you know that's probably quite normal for a lot of people but that's been quite a while of not getting anything and thinking that I could be a long time over this puzzle However, at last I've got some letters in the grid. Surely the J is going to be helpful, but I just can't think of words that have a J third in eight letters in a two-word phrase and most unheard of. It's a brilliant clue. You know, I'm thinking as I read that, if this is genuinely a fair clue, and yet it's such a natural phrase, most unheard of, it's fantastic. And we'll see in due course whether it is or not. Now, an M at the end of something saying bad weather is making me think storm, hailstorm or rainstorm. Um, spring month returning at the end of this clue. And that I was thinking, is that May because of M? But in fact, it's Mar, short for March. And that's returning. So you get R-A-M around in store, which is mostly or most of a phrase meaning expected to occur in store. So you put most of in store into um, ma returning and you get rainstorm, which is bad weather. Very cleverly worded clue. I mean, you wouldn't read that and think about in store as a phrase particularly, but it's, it's really well worded. Bad weather expected to occur mostly in spring month returning. So that gives us a start. 
And now back to two down. Italian left party after serving up hot food. Well, left is almost always the letter L. So I'm sort of thinking Luigi here would be an Italian in the sense of an Italian man's name. But I couldn't see how I-G-U-I, which might be served up. I can see the some of the letters from Linguini or something, but didn't quite make sense to me. I couldn't put it together. I didn't dare write in Luigi. And indeed, it's not right, so it's a good thing I didn't. Um, so then I have another look at a couple of clues. Now I've got letters in them, four across. Still that idea of mist looks quite good. Um, misquote or something to say wrongly. But I can't see quite how to use the phrase mist. Well, I did bother to fill in MIS because I was that confident. And that actually helped with four down. Staff acquiring millions, instant wealth. Now I've paused again. Um, now here, staff in this clue means to staff. So it's a verb and it acquires or puts into it one letter for millions and two letters for instant. Well, the letter for millions is obviously M. Um, instant in a crossword can mean a very quick moment of time. So that could be sometimes sec, but here it's mo for moment. So the word for staff around the outside gets MMO put in it. And the wealth is the definition. And the answer is mammon, which is, I think, a biblical god of wealth, like a, a false god of wealth, but, and therefore has come to mean wealth generally. And to staff is to man. Now we've got M something J at the start of the second word in eight across. And I can suddenly think that most major, well, majority would fit. What six and eight phrase can be something majority and could be clued as most unheard of? Still took me a few moments, but suddenly I worked out that the silent majority, which is a phrase, could be brilliantly clued, I think, as most who are unheard of because you don't hear from them. It's a really neatly worded cryptic definition, quite unusual sort of clue. There's not separate wordplay. It's just a definition that is really well disguised. And I love that one. So one down, kept promise while being an example in Java, say. Um, kept, you know, conserved, preserved, reserved. That would fit and that would mean kept. Promise can be an oath or a word. And I was wondering, is reserved word, is that a phrase? It's not one I knew. Didn't ring very many bells, although it was certainly possible. Um, while being an example in Java, say, and if it was reserved word, I'm thinking this might be something to do with um, the computer language Java rather than either the coffee or the Indonesian island. But I really wasn't sure what that could be. And I don't think I even tried it at this point. But I did move on to two down again. Italian left party after serving up hot food. And suddenly I can see, I eventually thought of a hot food that fits this space, something, something L, something I. And I finally had to shake the idea that L stood for left. In fact, um, Italian is two letters, left party is three letters. And it's a party on the left. And once you serve up, IT for Italian, lab for labor, the left party, you get balti, which is an Indian dish or hot food. And I mean, that's very clever and really misleading, especially to experienced crossworders who are expecting L to be left, party to be do, Italian can sometimes be I, really tough. Now one across now, one not thinking, well, the B helps me here because I'm focused on the definition and that suddenly does make sense. Somebody who does things without thinking can be described as a robot. And indeed a robot is a sort of being of a sort who doesn't think. Um, to take from scripture, why would robot be to take from scripture? Well, break it down into three and two, rob OT. So it's to take from is to rob and scripture, the scripture in this case is the Old Testament or OT. 
And the answer is robot. Very neatly worded clue. Now once I've got robot in at one across, and look, we're only suddenly now three and a half minutes in. So one and a half minutes getting nothing, and then two minutes getting most of the top half of the grid. I was quite pleased with that, to be fair. It's, it's been a decent kind of effort to get going after the slow start. So having a look at three down now, composer minus the lyricist ultimately useless. Once you imagine, which I didn't at first, that useless could be an anagram indicator, then you need nine letters, including T, N and S. And suddenly I can see that lyricist ultimately is just giving me the T and I need all of minus the. So it's an anagram of minus the T and it means a composer. And I was thinking, do I know enough composers? But it's not an actual composer. It's a word meaning a composer, which is a tunesmith. Now you might not know that as a compound word. You might know goldsmiths and wordsmiths um, and blacksmiths as Blacksmith's a very poor example because it's not somebody who makes something out of black, but um, a wordsmith and a goldsmith and a silversmith, they do make things out of the other part. So a tunesmith is somebody who crafts tunes. Now, one down, I've got the R at the start, so reserved looks very good, but I'm still not confident about word, although that could be a W at the beginning of 17 across. 12 across now, slowing down after abnormal power and vigour. Now this is where a bit of extended crossword knowledge does help. Slowing down in this clue is a three letter abbreviation from music. And I believe from doing enough listener crosswords that RIT on a music script stands for, I think it stands for ritardando, meaning slowing down in Italian. So once you've got that as a help, R-I-T at the end of this word gives you only one possible word, I think, that would fit, which means vigor and is esprit. And that means that abnormal power is ESP, which is beautifully disguised in this clue. You know, the reading of the clue, slowing down after abnormal power and vigor suggests clearly, you know, working out really hard or something. But in fact, the abnormal power is a power of the mind, ESP. Um, and it's paranormal rather than, we'd, we'd normally say paranormal rather than abnormal. So again, four minutes in and a bit more of the top done. Sorry, I think, yeah. No, I didn't write it in there. I'm sure I did, yeah, okay, figured it out now. And then going to 13 down because we've got the first letter. A head start for police with, in time, better IT. Well, it's a complicated clue with quite a lot of bits of wordplay, but that P in a three, six phrase is very helpful to me, especially when I just kind of lift out and separate the beginning of this clue. So forget head start as a compound phrase, just use a head. And if that could be the definition, so much money, for instance, a head, then the Latin phrase for that is per capita, which fits very nicely. Now, the way that the wordplay breaks down is then start for police is the letter P. In time, the time is era. And if you put in era, cap for better and IT for IT, you get per capita after that start for police. So it's a complicated clue, but it's made much easier if you can figure out that the definition is a head um, and a doesn't fulfill the normal function there. It means kind of each. Now, 17 across, bear with immature, backward and belligerent cry. That's quite an amusing uh, surface meaning. And you're picturing a wild bear uh, roaring, but the bear in this case, well, it is a bear. It's not to bear, it is a bear, but it's a uh, teddy bear and it's Winnie the Pooh or Pooh. Now with, we've seen with in a couple of other clues and it just meant beside, but here it's the abbreviation W and immature is raw. So you get P 
who w raw you put it all backward as the clue says and that gives you a war whoop which i managed to get to by remembering that i'm expecting a possible w in this 17 cell and a war whoop i wasn't absolutely certain that's a phrase i'm familiar with the phrase war cry i wondered for a second or two whether war shout could somehow be made from this wordplay but i worked it out and I guess there is a war whoop, you know, you might associate that with cowboy and Indian films or something. Um, now I'm going to fill in reserved word because I'm confident enough about that. Although less so when I looked at 20 across. Scandinavian, drunk as a lord, question mark. I couldn't think of, you know, familiar with a few things like Swede or Lap or Dane as Scandinavians, but none of those fit. And what, what is drunk as a lord doing? I couldn't really see. So I think I passed over that clue for now. Um, and moved on to 16 down. Have a look at that. It's just got an O in it. And this is quite a good bit of solving, to be fair. Stays on track, gracious and firm. And how did I get to this? Well, stays. Stays seemed a slightly suspicious word. And... If you were being misled in a clue, stays 99% of the time it's used in normal language, it means remains. Um, or maybe a visit somewhere where you had a stay at a holiday resort. But here it can also mean um, women's undergarments, specifically corsets, or a corset can be stays. And I was thinking, well, that's good. And if I could put corset on RY, the crossword abbreviation for railway, which could be track, I get corsetry. I couldn't see how that's gracious and firm at first, but in the end I worked out that it's the stays are the corsetry. And what you have to do is put on track RY, gracious, which is core, like an expression of amazement, and firm is set. And now we come to the clue that I think this puzzle is going to be known for by people for a long time. 24 across. And I don't mean that necessarily in this is a wonderful clue way. Which story unfolds in 2 Kings 1, 2 Kings 2? Question mark. Trivia time. Well, I was very lucky. I've stopped the clock here. I think I moved to this clue at about 5.15. And I solved this clue in about five or six seconds. And by solved, I mean I looked at story and I looked at these letters and this spacing and these hyphens and I immediately knew what the answer was. And I could see a lot of anagram fodder that was useful in this clue. I didn't work it out individually. I haven't actually worked it out individually now, to be honest. Okay, every time it says two kings, it means KK. And then you've got an I and an II and trivia and T for time. And if you were to unfold all of those, you can get the answer to this clue. That's not how I did it. I did it by knowing the sort of thing that Times Crossword Solvers used to need to know a lot. And this is a story from the works of Rudyard Kipling in his Just So Stories. Uh, one of which is about a mongoose with, if I remember correctly, self-esteem issues, um, whose name given to him by Kipling is Ricky Ticky Tavy. I don't know how to pronounce that properly, but that's how I used to pronounce it as a child. And at some point I memorized it and it's gone in within seven seconds of my reading the clue. Um, obviously, I mean, obviously, a lot of people will never solve that. If you haven't heard of that story, and I doubt that many people have, you know, maybe 5% of people reading this puzzle will have heard of that story. F a fewer number of those will have remembered the name and the spelling. It's a vicious clue. <laughs> it's just too hard. I, which story, by the way, I have a feeling there's some prelude to... Um, the Just So stories in which Kipling writes a small poem about keeping 
six serving men who are called who and how and where and which and why. And it may be that this story is the story told by which. I don't know, but I have a feeling that which story is significant. Um, maybe it's not. I might be wrong about that. Now, 25 across. I couldn't get this immediately. Attack article penned by surrogate NCO. That is a very hard clue. Um, I needed all the checking letters. And I will tell you for now that attack is the definition. It's a particular type of attack. Article is an indefinite article. Penned means enclosed. Surrogate has a five letter synonym. And NCO translates to a different um, uh, abbreviation for um, a particular type of non-commissioned officer in the army. But that makes that a very hard clue. It's also quite an odd word in a way in terms of how it's spelt and so on. And as I say, I didn't get it immediately. Struggling with 20 across as well, it would have really helped to get 21 down. So luckily, as soon as I look at this phrase, butchers cleared up, packing last of pork, I completely ignored the surface meaning about somebody dealing with meat. Butchers, with that apostrophe S on, I'm aware is a phrase for a quick look in British slang. And I think that's from Butcher's Hook, the Cockney rhyming slang. Yes, it obviously is. So to have a butcher's is a quick look. Now, I know another slang term for a quick look, which is a deco, which I don't know the source of that. It's probably Indian in origin or something. Um, and that can be spelt either D-E-C-K-O or D-E-K-K-O. And uh, again, that's knowledge that you gain from crosswords that you might have in real life, but is much more easily remembered from having seen it before. Now, how does deco work here? The last of pork is the letter K, and that is packed in by something upwards, O-K-E-D, and cleared is okayed in this case. If you okayed something, you cleared it. So the answer is deco, and that didn't take long as well. Now, A, O and the Y still can't solve this, I think, at this point. And now I've got this problem with 20 across, which I still didn't understand at first, but eventually I worked out, really, if these are right, the only thing that fits is rolled, as in rolled doll. It's a name, and rolled doll was so called because of his Swedish heritage. So it's a Scandinavian name. Roald Amundsen, of course, was the uh, uh, polar explorer who was, I think, Swedish, might have been Norwegian, sorry to whichever country I've got that wrong from. Um, the wordplay here is saying that the letters R-O-A-L-D could be drunk or kind of confused or anagrammed as A-L-O-R-D, A-Lord. So it is just an anagram, but one that was quite well disguised. Now, 22 across, something quotable, a phrase that's 5-4. And I could immediately think of this phrase happily. From champ appearing on channel. Now, champ here sounds like it means a champion, somebody who's won something. But in fact, it means to champ, which is to bite. Um, and that is on a channel, which in this case is a sound. This is kind of the sea passage and you get a sound bite, which is something quotable. Now, 19 down, rubbish, I must think, should be placed under bed. Brilliantly worded clue again. Um, now, the U in the clue was making me think that I must think must be um, or maybe er, uh, you are, which is kind of filler while you're thinking. So I was trying to work out how an M could go in between the U and the K, and that's not how it works. But luckily, that had got me thinking of um as I must think. And if you place that under a bed, which could be a bunk, you get bunkum, which is rubbish. So that's another um, decent bit of solving there. And the time has gone quite well here. Now I can finally do this attack, which is a paroxysm, a kind of um, a fit type that type of attack and proxy sm for sergeant major is the surrogate nco now 15 down tick off papers put out and delivered fast um that's quite hard 
to be honest. And not 100% sure I've still understood the wordplay, but we'll come back to that when I solve it. Um, I couldn't do it immediately. 23 down. This is another clue, another answer that is really a bit beyond the pale for a daily crossword, just like Ricky Ticky Tavi or Ricky Ticky Tavi. Monitor possibly not needing large chamois. Well, I knew this because I've solved listener crosswords and I've come across this word in the dictionary. It's a bizarre word that is izard, and I think I've got it in the dictionary here. Izard, a Pyrenean chamois. So it's like a mountain goat, that means. Um, how anybody's meant to know that who's just doing this puzzle for fun, I don't really know. What is the monitor possibly not needing large? Well, a monitor can be a lizard, a monitor lizard. So if you take the L for large off that, you get Izard. And that is this bizarre chamois. I mean, I bet nobody in the Pyrenees calls it an Izard, but there you go. Now, what Meyerhoff and Zamenhof do, that's final. What those two words do is end in the letters OF. So that gives us end OF, which is a fr as a phrase is end of, which is kind of modern slang, modern slang, I mean, the last 20 years, short for end of story. So people obviously say end of when they mean that's final. Um, nine down. Now I got fixated. I felt this must be belief, especially with credible in the clue, but it looked like an anagram of leg, e.g. a fibber. And I kept thinking beyond belief would fit, but the actual phrase in this case, it is an anagram of leg, e.g. a fibber, and it's beggar belief. And I really had to kind of focus on the letters and work out what I had left over after taking belief out of this anagram to figure it out. And at first I was going, how can it be beggar belief? But eventually I realized that there is the phrase to beggar belief. Now 14 across, a bit more straightforward. Ish. You texted and tweeted about indication of inflation taking over. Well, you texted in texts, commonly the letter U is used to mean you. So if we begin this clue with a U, tweeted about something. Tweeted can, in the old style meaning, can be the past tense of sing. So it could be sang or sung. And indication of inflation here is RPI, the retail price index. So if you put sung around RPI after you, you get usurping, which means taking over. Now, couldn't do 18 across. I think I went back to 15 down, which delivered fast looks a lot now with what we've got in the grid like rapid fire. And I think the way this works is wrap for tick off, ID for papers and put out for fire as in to put out of a job or something. But uh, I'm not 100% sure about that. Now, dope runs across grass becoming increasingly active. You can see that's spryer. To be spry is to be very active, especially for one's age. And here the dope is the SP, which is kind of racing slang for the inside information. Runs is R from the cricket abbreviation and grass is the rye. So SP and R are placed across rye and you get spryer. Now that gives us a Y at the end of seven down, which we haven't looked at yet. Um, times long ago, opposing leave. Yes, at first. Well, again, ignore the Brexit um, surface. Opposing is anti, leave is quit. So if you're opposing leave, you're anti-quit. Yes, at first is the letter Y, and that gives us antiquity for times long ago. Now, 11 across with a Q in it. It feels like it ought to be easy. This is another crazy recherche word. Americans game and without question profligate. Now, again, long ago as a child, I read a book about the Olympics, which mentioned that in in the St. Louis Olympics of 2000 and, oh, sorry, of 1904 or 90, yeah, 1904, they featured croquet, I believe. But in America, that game or the equivalent game was called Roque, R-O-Q-U-E. Now, I don't know any Americans who know Roque, but 
maybe it is a known game. It certainly was at one point, and here the answer is Roke, and Q is the question, and you place a Rue or Profligate without that on the outside of it, and you get Roke, which is a bizarre answer to use, especially with that definition. But there you go. Six down, sound of matchmakers cutting tool. Well, this is something that sounds like somebody who's putting matches together, and it means a cutting tool. And that is something that pairs, P-A-R-E-S. So a pairer sounds like a pairer with an I, but doesn't have one and is a cutting tool. And that then allows us to go to four across, which now looks like misspeak for say wrongly. So missed for fog was wrong the whole time, even though I put in MIS because I thought it was right. But what it means here is that a hill walker in the fog could perhaps miss a peak or miss peak. And to say wrongly is to misspeak, which I think is a fairly recent coinage in English. And there we go. That is my solve of today's Times Cryptic in 8 minutes 39 seconds. And I am well aware that that is a heck of a good time. Um, for most people, I mean, how are most people going to cope with Ricky Tiki Tovey, Izzard and Roke in particular, let alone some of the general knowledge needed for St. James's, Mammon, reserved word? I mean, a lot of you will know that. It is apparently a computing term for something that um, is a word that you have to use for a particular use in computing so you can't use it more generally and Java is an example well I didn't know that but I mean Deco, Tunesmith, St James I, there's so many difficult things here it is an absolutely vicious puzzle and to get it done in under 10 minutes I, I admit I'm very pleased about that I don't think many genuine solvers will be bettering that time it's it's a incredible puzzle in some ways there we go that's my solve of today's times crossword thank you very much to the compiler for setting it <laughs> even though i think you're a little unfair on most people it's a great challenge and um thanks for watching do subscribe if you're enjoying the content uh please and um thanks to those who sponsor us on patreon we are very kind and we do depend on you um, hope to see you again on Cracking the Cryptic soon. Please don't forget, if you're interested in cryptic clues, that Simon is recording one clue a day from this puzzle. So today there'll be one of these clues on Instagram. Um, you get a 60 second maximum video on Instagram. Simon talks through one of the clues from each day's Times crossword. And I'll be interested to know what he chooses in a way I hope he chooses silent majority because I thought that wording most unheard of was beautiful. But there are there are quite a few lovely clues here. Miss Speak, the last one in, that would be another one that I really liked. Um, anyway, do do follow him on Instagram. It's kind of, as I say, less than a minute a day and a very interesting listen. Thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.